Robert Boulay, right here, was a U.S. Marine, D-Day veteran. He was aboard the Battleship Texas. Ada Kuhn, right here, is a veteran of the Women's Army Corps, and she is 104 and a half. <laughs> Privilege to have them here, to have uh, spent the last few days with them. It's just an honor to, uh, to be in their presence, really. But uh, we're here to uh, give you an experience, much like many veterans would have had in 1944. So picture instead of a, a white vinyl tent over you, green canvas, uh, and uh, maybe no chairs, maybe you're seated on the ground, maybe you're standing, maybe it's open air, uh, because the, uh, the chapel services in World War II were often very uh, impromptu and improvised, but they were very important to the men of uh, World War II for their morale, for their endurance, and uh, we want to help to recreate that and pay tribute to the many chaplains who made such a difference. The invasion force has been moved to the south of England from all over the British Isles where they are sealed into enclosures to await the invasion, and I literally mean sealed. There was no weekend pass, there was no mail going out or coming in. They stayed there in those enclosures, they called sausages, because they're kind of shaped like that on the map. And in the sausages, they spent their last few days in England and would have certainly uh, incorporated a chapel service for them. Soon they will be getting onto uh, trucks or marching to ports in the south of England to board uh, troop transports and get ready to cross the channel. So their next stop is the battlefield of Normandy. So uh, the chaplains were essential to putting all of this together. They helped to keep the morale up. They listened to the soldiers who were, remember, 18, 19, 20 years old a long way from home. Some of them had been in England for more than two years without seeing their family. Um, they, they needed the encouragement. They needed the, uh, the counseling very often. So the chaplains uh, listened to the soldiers. They encouraged their morale, uh, talked them through problems, helped them deal with their homesickness, uh, whatever religion. They're always ready to counsel and to listen to and help out uh, a man of whatever faith or of no faith, because their job was bigger than just whatever their uh, their identification. The butterflies that are in their stomachs, uh, the, uh, the the fear, the uncertainty of what's coming in the next few days, and uh, listen to the chapel service with that. Have I desired of the Lord that I will seek out, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in His temple. For in time of trouble shall we have in his good, in his spirit of the tabernacle shall we have in him. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul longeth, yea, you be fainted for the courts of God. Thus saith the Lord, the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Our feet shall stand within our gates, O Jerusalem. Offer a special prayer for the name. O eternal Lord God, who alone spreadest out the heavens and rulest the raging of the sea, vouchsafe to take into thine almighty and most gracious protection our country's navy and all who serve therein. Preserve them from the dangers of the sea, from the violence of the enemy that they may be a safeguard unto the United States of America. The security for such as pass upon the seas upon their lawful occasions. Lord God of hosts, stretch forth, we pray thee, thine almighty arm, to strengthen and protect the soldiers of our country. Support them in the day of battle, and in the time of peace, keep them safe from all evil, and do them with courage and loyalty.